the world's biggest tech companies are getting into healthcare. If you zoom out into the future and you look back and you ask the question, what was Apple's greatest contribution to mankind? It will be about health. These companies are thinking about the space because it is massive. It is worth trillions of dollars today. And healthcare is one of the few sectors that hasn't been disrupted yet by technology. Well, once you decide to look at healthcare and health tech, the obvious place to start is with chronic conditions. And by far the biggest segment there is the diabetes market. In 2017, 425 million people worldwide were living with diabetes. That number is expected to rise to 629 million by 2045. For years, Apple and Alphabet have been rumored to be working on non-invasive ways to check glucose levels, but never brought anything to market. Now, both tech giants are collaborating with medical device company Dexcom, a maker of continuous glucose monitors for people with diabetes. The company has seen incredible growth. Its revenue grew 44% in 2018 to over a billion dollars. That's up from 718 million in 2017. I mean, look, there's Uber, okay? There's Airbnb, and then there's Dexcom. <laughs> All the tech companies are looking to healthcare, and they're looking to healthcare as a way to expand, and they're looking as healthcare as a way you know, to get to the future. We believe we can be an integral component of that for a number of these companies. We got an inside look at the innovation and manufacturing process behind Dexcom's latest CGM to better understand why two of the world's biggest tech companies are partnering with it. First, we need to understand what a continuous glucose monitor is and why diabetics use them. Diabetes is a disease where the body does not produce any insulin. This is known as type one. It's also when the body does not use insulin efficiently. This is known as type 2. Both types lead to high glucose levels in the body. And whether it's treated with insulin, diet, exercise, or some other medication, blood sugar monitoring is a crucial key to management. The traditional method of measuring is with a glucose meter, a small device that measures the level from a single drop of blood. However, this method offers no context to what is happening in between readings. So a lot of diabetics are turning to continuous glucose monitors that automatically read blood sugar levels every five minutes. Insulin by itself can be a very deadly drug. If a patient takes too much insulin, they can go dangerously low and possibly go into a coma and die. What our device has is alerts and alarms that tell a patient, hey, you're too low, you need to wake up and do something. It works by putting a small hair size sensor under your skin. The sensor then measures glucose levels in your interstitial fluid. The data is then transmitted to a monitor or a phone. The flow of data allows the user to instantly see their blood sugar levels, whether it is steady, rising, or falling, and shows trends in how levels change depending on things like food and exercise. There are only a handful of companies making devices similar to Dexcom CGM. There's really only two players in this market. There's Dexcom and there's Abbott. And they're, and they're basically taking a different approach. Dexcom is kind of like the quote unquote, the Apple of CGM. You know, the high end premium product to get all the bells, all the whistles. Whereas the Freestyle Libre from Abbott is a value proposition. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's extraordinarily cheap. It's easy to get in the patient's hands. It works just fine. Medtronic and Sensionics also have CGMs on the market. All four can be used with smartphones, and soon Dexcom will just need the Apple Watch. And we're also now supporting native core Bluetooth on the watch, which is going to enable experiences for apps that work with small devices around you. So for example, continuous glucose monitoring directly from Dexcom sensor to your watch. Apple has been thinking about ways to bring data that a person with diabetes would need right to the smartwatch or the iPhone so that they can monitor their health in a way that's just a little bit more comfortable. The way CGMs work currently, you need a receiver or a phone within a few feet of the sensor in order to receive blood sugar data. Dexcom has been working with Apple since 2017 on losing the phone tether and going straight to the Apple Watch. We've worked very closely with Apple over the years. Our app on the phone is the very first app of this nature for a medical device of this high classification to go straight to a phone. What we learned in going to the phone is there's a lot we didn't know. And we've had to work with, with Apple, particular on the iPhone and the, and the Apple Watch apps to make sure we understand how all the protocols work. Our software will be upgraded to accept the direct-to-watch protocol 
But in addition to that, we have to update the firmware on the transmitter that is part of the body-worn component so that it can communicate with the watch. In 2017, Tim Cook told University of Glasgow students that he wore a continuous glucose monitor for a few weeks. I asked Sarah if it was a Dexcom CGM. I know that Apple's very interested in the technology, and they've done some work and some studies around it. He may have worn ours. If it's going to an Apple Watch, he probably did. This new feature will only work on Series 2 and later Apple Watches because it needs the BLE Bluetooth connection hardware. Sayer, who was beta testing the Direct to Watch during our interview, said users can expect the official rollout in early 2020. Dexcom will also debut its next generation sensor in 2020, the G7. It's a collaboration with Alphabet's life sciences group, Verily. Several years ago, we signed an agreement with Google Health, which became Verily, to jointly develop a continuous glucose monitor configuration with them. And their responsibilities were developing the electronics and miniaturizing components and really taking advantage of things that, that they knew. And we, on the other hand, have developed the mechanical system, the sensor, and all those other components we put them together. Verily is just one of many companies who have tried and failed at making non-invasive glucose monitors. One of its first projects back in 2014 was a smart contact lens that measured blood glucose. It paused the project in 2018 after it found insufficient consistency in measurements of tear glucose to blood glucose. I think what they learn through those experiences is they can't do it alone. And so these days, increasingly, as these tech companies enter the space, you see them trying to work with partners within health and life sciences that have that established track record. They know how to work with regulators and they know how to build devices that are safe. And so ultimately, I think these companies are trying to both avoid the liability and avoid making the same mistakes they've made before by turning to players like Dexcom Sayer says the G7 will be smaller and last longer than previous versions, with a wear duration of 14 to 15 days. This product evolved as kind of a vision that they had for what they thought a CGM could be, and we had a vision here of what we wanted to do. So we, we took literally components of what they thought a CGM could be, because again, look at Google, they're a consumer company, they produce phones, they you know, get all kinds of data. They looked at the problem different than we do because they would want to get this to everybody, whereas our focus has always been as a medical device company, where performance and FDA regulations and all those things drive our decisions, and they still do. But by combining those two, there were very unique thought processes that came from both sides of the equation. Dexcom's newest CGM is authorized by the FDA to work with different types of devices and software which opens up the possibility to broaden the market to more than just diabetes. We are at the tip of the iceberg for CGM. And I don't think most people realize that. You start adding other disease states or health conditions, weight loss in particular, it would it shock me if this was a $25 billion market? Absolutely not. We believe continuous glucose monitoring has applications far beyond uh, just the care of people with diabetes who take insulin every day. And the devices and the data capabilities and all the things that these companies have may be things that we can utilize in the future as we develop future generations of our products. There's also a growing number of consumers who don't have diabetes who want to track their health. So these companies are thinking more broadly now about this market of people who are just interested in their blood sugar. Um, if they have, say, oatmeal in the morning, does their blood sugar spike? How does it respond to exercise? And I think we're going to see a whole new generation of technologies that appeal to this increasing trend of tracking all sorts of health data. Apple even recently started selling a glucose meter in the Apple Store. Apple and Google are definitely racing to be at the center of our health information. So when we look to see what our heart rate is or how well we slept last night or what our glucose is, they want us to come to them. They're, you know, in the information business and of course then there are, I hate to say it, but there are sales opportunities with that as well. Our technology relationships with Apple and Google have been, you know, drivers of our business. I think what it really shows is how important this technology can be to the future of healthcare.